Hello, everyone, and thanks for uh, reuniting with us today to connect with Tony Khan, who is here to discuss the upcoming Ring of Honor Supercard of Honor event in Philadelphia. Uh, as always, we respectfully ask that you not ask two party questions. We want to give everyone a chance to ask Tony a question uh, over the next hour. So your cooperation is certainly appreciated. Uh, and also, uh, as always, please try to keep your questions focused on the Supercard of Honor show this Sunday in Philly. Finally, as Robin mentioned, please make sure your phone is unmuted. Now is a good time to check that and uh, make sure you're unmuted. So with that, it's time to introduce Tony Khan, who will provide some opening thoughts, and then we're going to open the lines for your questions. Good afternoon, Tony. Good afternoon, Jim. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. I'm really excited to talk to you. Uh, very excited to chat about Supercard of Honor and Thank you all for joining us and hopefully see a lot of you at the show tomorrow. Uh, thanks for joining us for this call. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Tony. So here we go. Uh, we're going to start with Jim Barcelone from Miami Herald. And uh, after Jim and Tony connect, uh, Jason Paul from Pro Wrestling Net, or Pro Wrestling .net I'm up, super card of honor. will uh, be next. Jim, you're up. Okay. Can you hear me okay? I can. Okay, great. Thanks, Thank Jim. You. Thanks, Tony. Hey, thanks for both of you. Um, I know I want to talk about Supercard of Honor, Dalton Castle, credible talent, but obviously I've got to ask just your thoughts of the CM Punk interview. I mean, one comment he made, he said you were a nice guy and not a boss. And I, I know you had this strong relationship with him. And I'm just curious if there's anything you could share just about your thoughts, if not the interview, just about CM Punk and this whole situation and just navigating through all this now. I know Adam Copeland had a really big, good speech last night on Dynamite, but I have to ask you just about all that. No, I'd, I'd prefer not to talk about that. I think uh, I'd really rather focus on the card and, and Super Card of Honor, but thanks for asking. I think uh, I, I do appreciate you asking, and there's plenty of uh, interesting things we could talk about here. Uh, is there anything else you'd want to talk about, Jim? They had to unmute. They had to unmute me. Thank you for offering that. Um, I do. Then you've been AW's been growing. You guys have had some big moments, some really successful moments. You got Bring of Honor on board, and you also have some challenging moments. I'm curious, what have you learned about pro wrestling, the pro pro wrestling business, now that you're behind the curtain instead of in front of it? And thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, well, it's been about five years now. Or approaching five years since the launch of the company and about five years ago at this time we were finishing up our first ever tv deal and getting ready to launch our first ever event the original double or nothing it's crazy to think how much time has flown and we'll be celebrating the five-year anniversary next month in las vegas where it all began at the mgm grand garden arena it's very surreal to think about and so much has happened in the five years I'm very grateful to everybody who's made it possible for the launch of AEW as well as the purchase of ROH and uh, of great events like this weekend Supercard and the upcoming AEW Dynasty and then, of course, our five-year anniversary show in Las Vegas. A lot of things have changed here over that time. I, I've, I've definitely learned a lot about the business, and I think it, in looking back, it's really amazing how much can happen in five years. You know, Sting's entire three-year run is in the middle of this, and that's one of the most important things to me in my lifetime in wrestling, to me personally. And going back just as a fan, it's one of the greatest things I've seen in wrestling and that I was able to work on it and be there and be a part of it. It's really special to me. And so in our five years, it's amazing to think that within our five years, I mean, there was there was – some great things in AEW before Sting. We've done some great things since Revolution. But really, to me, that was probably the highlight of the whole thing, that three years. And now, uh, looking at what we're doing and where we're at, I think we have the best roster in wrestling. And I really believe AEW is where the best wrestle. And AEW and ROH working together, complementary promotions. I think this is going to be a great event, Supercard of Honor. And We've got another episode of ROH TV tonight. The go-home show is tonight on watchroh.com, and I think 
uh, we're going to be in a great position to have a great show tomorrow at Supercard. So thanks for asking, Jim. Uh, it's been uh, a great five years in wrestling so far, and I'm really excited about the five-year anniversary coming up soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tony, and thanks, Jim. As always, you've always been a uh, uh, great uh, attendee here on, on, on these calls. Jason hey, can Powell. You hear me? Yeah, Jason Powell from ProWrestling.net is next, followed by Bill Pritchard from WrestleZone. Jason? Hey, Tony. You made a round of talent cuts on Monday, including some wrestlers who work for Ring of Honor, and it seems to go against what you've said previously about releasing wrestlers as opposed to honoring the full length of their contracts. Can you talk about that change in philosophy? And also, was this the end of that round of talent cuts? I am very, very proud of the AEW roster. We have a great group of women and men and a lot of great talent working in ROH. Anytime we have to let someone go, it's a tough call. Uh, we've expanded the company greatly this year. Uh, and I continue... I can tell you that I can definitely plan to continue this expansion. I think we've built the best roster in wrestling, and I have no intention of stopping. I am going to keep the foot on the gas pedal. We're going to keep going after top talent. And to do so, we need a war chest. And it's important to keep an eye on the budget. I definitely value the people who work here and anytime you have to make a cut it's a very tough call and these are fluid situations uh they're all different from each other as an example one of the things that has come up is anthony henry uh, is somebody who's done great work in roh i really like anthony and his team the workhorseman anthony got injured on an independent show i do think when our wrestlers you know there's a there's a double-edged sword here when we Book independent shows, injuries can happen, and there's a risk to that. And they can affect the wrestler's career. And, and frankly, here in AEW, it changes our plans. Or in ROH, it can change our plans uh, when the talent get injured here. And, and it, by the same token, it changes our plans when people get injured on the outside. And anytime anybody gets injured here, I feel responsible. When it happens on the independents, it's a challenging gray area. I've had a little bit of time to reflect and think about it. Uh, Anthony's going to be healing up soon, and, you know, I've, I've thought about it, and Anthony's going to come back to AEW and uh, ROH uh, when he's cleared, which is going to be pretty soon, and uh, I think we've worked something good out. So I'd, I'd like to have Anthony back in AEW, ROH. And uh, I think these are all fluid situations. It, In some ways, it was me uh, trying to make changes to the budget. I'm actually expanding our budget this year, growing it, but to do so, uh, I did have to make some cuts because we're growing the company a lot this year, and I am going to be very aggressive when it comes to the big-name free agents for the rest of the year, as we already have been in the first quarter of the year, adding big names like, Kazuchika Okada, Mercedes Monet, and Will Ospreay. And I think that uh, these are all different situations. It's possible that I think everybody there has great things to offer, and it's possible you may see some of them back here. And in the case of Anthony Henry, when he's healed up, you will see him back here. So thank you. Thank you, Jason. <clears throat> Bill Pritchard from WrestleZone will be next, followed by Samantha Shipman from the Daily DDT. Bill? What? You're good, Bill. Oh, okay. Hey, Tony, how are you doing? Very well. Thank you very much. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, so I know you just addressed uh, all the different cuts being fluid um but specifically wanted to ask about uh the boys being cut because they were involved in one of the top storylines on ring of honor tv and just wanted to see if you could expand on what you know 
what happened with them or, you know, how you're dealing with cha potential changes to that storyline moving forward. These are all very yeah. different situations. I think Dalton and Johnny have been very creative. I, I really enjoyed Dalton and Johnny working together. And this came at a time after Dalton had lost custody of the boys on ROH TV. The rivalry between Dalton and Johnny has been tremendous, and I'm really looking forward to the fight without honor. Uh, to be honest, uh, this I'll just I really like these calls. I like talking to you, and when I can be honest, I'll be honest. Uh, they didn't show up for work on more than one occasion. And it's not acceptable. And I think the whole locker room knew about it. And I, you can't do that. And uh, that's it. And that's why I had to make a tough call. Thank you, Bill. Thanks. Samantha Shipman from the Daily DDT will be next, followed by Amy Nemedy from WrestleJoy. Samantha. Hey. Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you great. Okay, <laughs> sorry, it was uh, it was the delay on my end. Uh, thanks for uh, speaking with us today, Tony. And you, you've pretty much answered some of the questions that I had, but is there, you've talked about obviously wanting to add more top talent and keep your foot on the gas, obviously. Uh, can you give a ballpark about how many wrestlers are under contract with AEW and ROH, and are they still kind of like the, the tiered contracts that there were in the beginning? Uh, we have a, a very deep roster, um, and it uh, it is similar uh, where there are people on largely weekly deals. There are some people that are on per appearance deals, um, and it has, I think, you know, it's fair to say when we added ROH, we added more talent, and uh, a adding uh, Collision, when we expanded AEW, television from three hours a week to five hours a week uh, we wanted to grow the roster and i'm very excited about the potential for where we'll be at the end of 2024 i can already feel uh you know it's funny uh, i wasn't expecting um a blizzard in april but that's what we got last night in new england and it was pretty scenic and, and lovely and it it's not exactly reminding me of spring weather, but it's funny because I feel like I could look out the window at the snow and already be thinking about the holiday season. It were, you know, over eight months away from Christmas and the Continental Classic and the holiday season, but I'm very excited to see uh, where we end up, and I think we'll have a great chance to expand the roster. I think there'll be great men and women out there uh, the rest of the year, and we want to continue being aggressive and building the best roster we can, and uh, I'm very excited about it, and I really believe AEW is where the best wrestle is very true, and I think we have the best roster in pro wrestling right now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samantha. Amy Nemedy from WrestleJoy is next. And I'm going to follow that with a write-in question from Arunava uh, Goshal from Sports Keto. Amy. About the Supercard of Honor show itself. Um, so I'm looking at where it's taking place in Philadelphia, and I think it's worth noting that this is where Ring of Honor itself was founded initially 22 years ago. And when I look at this card and I see Mark Briscoe and I see Athena and I see, you know, both the World Television Championship and I see the um, inaugural Women's Television Championship, it really does a good job of showing what Ring of Honor is now. And I think that's really poignant in and of itself. Another anniversary, though, comes with one of those matches, which is Athena and Hikaru Shida. Athena is 48 and 0 undefeated in Ring of Honor singles matches since she became ROH Women's World Champion in December of 2022. Hikaru Shida is, of course, a three-time Women's World Champion with AEW, Warrior with a Kendo Stick, 
and the only woman thus far to sort of break that confidence of Athena who has shaped this new era of ring of honor around her. They have met one time in singles matches 10 years ago in Shimmer where she did defeated Athena. I'd like you to talk about Athena in ring of honor and how she's sort of built the women's division around her, how that's taken off with her at the helm and the stakes of this match heading into it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. Uh, well, I was just talking about the holiday season going back a few years to Christmas 2022. Uh, it's been a long time. Athena has been the world champion in ROH and Athena is just a tremendous champion. And I think the, things we've done in ROH have been tremendous. I look back to last summer, I have very fond memories working with Athena and Billy and developing the Minion story that has become such a huge part of ROH and has become so closely identified with Athena and Billy Starks and Lexi Nair, who all do such a fantastic job on ROH TV. I really like working with Athena and Billy and Lexi. So it's very fitting that we have these great championship matches and you have uh, Athena and Billy both competing in big championship matches. I think Athena versus Sheeta is a great world championship match and I think Billy Starks versus Queen Aminata is a great world television championship match. And as for what you said about this is a great example of what ROH product is and why people should be excited about it. I think that's a tremendous point. And I'm very very pleased with what we built in ROH over the last few years. Uh, this represents two years since I took over the company. And in that time, most of that time, Athena has been the champion and a dominant champion. She had so many great matches along the way. And this may be her toughest opponent and it'll be very interesting to see what happens here because she's battling another great world champion multiple time world champion former AEW women's world champion Hikaru Shida somebody who holds a victory over Athena we've never seen Athena like this we've never seen her confidence shaken like this uh, Athena is probably one of the strongest personalities one of the boldest and most confident people in ROH. And to see that Hikaru Shida has cracked that stony exterior and that Athena seems to really be sweating this match, it's very, very interesting. And it's been really great to see. And then the television title tournament, wow, we've had so many great matches in the tournament. And I'm really pleased with this great final. I think Queen Aminata and Billy Starks are two of the top young wrestlers and I love that this tournament has reached uh, in my opinion a perfect conclusion to have a big match like Aminata versus Billy Starks and it's very fitting that we've been able to watch both of them grow and develop here in ROH and in AEW and see how far they both come Queen Aminata has worked her way into this position, having these great matches week after week and clearly improving, where I think Queen Aminata is a great case for the most improved wrestler in the world right now. And Billy Starks, somebody who's so young, has so much potential, and has this fascinating teacher-protege relationship with Athena, but also a great dynamic with Lexi, uh, where both of them... Uh, really have bonded, but then the two of them also are both terrified of Athena on some level, and it's brought them closer together, uh, but they have their own unique relationships. It's really cool, and it, I love working with all three of them on it, and I think it's added so much to ROH, and I think we have these great championship matches with Athena and Hikaru Shida and Queen Aminata and Billy Starks because ROH is doing some of the best wrestling in the world and that includes some of the best women's wrestling. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Amy.
Tony, here's the, uh, the write-in from Aruna Vagoshal from Sports Kita, and then Chris and Ashley from USA Today Sports Media Group will follow your answer to Arunava. She asks, unlike previous Ring of Honor events, only seven matches are confirmed so far for Supercard of Honor. Does this mean that you're making some adaptions to have shorter match cards? No, I don't think that's really accurate. I think this is about where we would normally be uh, at this point in developing the card. The ROH pay-per-views have, since we launched, historically been shorter than AEW pay-per-views uh, and have had a little bit less on the cards because they're, they're shorter cards. And uh, every ROH pay-per-view I've done since we launched in 2022 has been shorter than every AEW pay-per-view. And... All of the AEW pay-per-views have been roughly the same length, except for Double or Nothing 22. Uh, that was about a half hour longer uh, by design in, in Las Vegas on the West Coast and running a little bit later. And uh, this is very consistent with where we've been for the cards. I still have planning to, to announce more things. We, we have a go-home television show tonight. And... Uh, the zero hour, but I think the, the length of the card and the size of the card is pretty consistent with what we've done in ROH and where we've been when we do these ROH media calls. I would venture to guess that's probably r roughly the, the exact number or plus or minus one of where we've been almost every single one of these ROH media calls that we've done together. So uh, thank you. All right. Thank you, Arunaba. Kristen Ashley from USA Today Sports Media Group is next. Kristen will be followed by Rich Fan from PW Torch. Kristen? Well, I'm absolutely thrilled to see a stardom match on the card. Um, stardom talent has absolutely appeared before on ROH, but not quite at this level. Um, I'm just curious, how detrimental was Rossi to building a working relationship with Stardom that really got this ball rolling? Uh, can you mind asking that one more time? Sorry, just to sure. make sure I, I don't want to misstate it. I just want to make sure I'm clear. Sure. So how detrimental was Rossi um, to building a working relationship with Stardom that got this match rolling? <laughs> well, it's a much better relationship now, I can tell you that. Uh, it's been a real pleasure working with the new start of management. I'm very grateful to our partners at Bushi Road and very grateful to Stardom and New Japan Pro Wrestling. And really, I think it's a new day for sure with Stardom and AEW. And it, the new management has been tremendous to work with. Very grateful to them. Uh, and very excited to have stardom represented in ROH. And again, I think in ROH you're seeing a lot of the best women's wrestling in the world is happening in ROH right now. And President Okada from stardom has been a great friend to us. And it's a young relationship, but uh, Taro is just a great guy and very honest and has been very open. And it's been 180 degrees what it had been like working with stardom up to this point. You know, when I've worked with uh, Bushi Road in the past, when there were wrestlers interested in coming to America, I believe the parent company, and specifically in our past dealings with New Japan Pro Wrestling, if there's a wrestler interested in coming here, typically they've been very open, and I have never wanted to go behind their back and work behind their back, and I've always been very open about the deal. I felt like that was a good relationship with New Japan Pro Wrestling, and there's always been the understanding that if somebody was going to come to America, I think everybody would rather have those people in AEW where they are still part of the family, they can still come work at the shows, and in all these cases where people have come over, I have never gone behind their back. I always go through the front door, and that is something that I would appreciate the same kindness and the same courtesy. And I think, it, you know, it's a real relationship and we're real people, and nobody's perfect, but I think we've really come together and built a, a great working relationship where there's so many positive things happening. And now I'm really excited that that's going to be able to happen with stardom too. 
you know, when I recruited Mariah May, Mariah May was somebody I really wanted to bring here, and I had a plan for and ideas for, and I had to get in touch with Mariah myself, which is very different from what it's been like working with New Japan, and that was because we had a totally different kind of relationship with stardom at the time. And uh, now here we are, and stardom is sending great talent over, working with us. They want to partner with us. It's a, a very new day and, and a different time, and it's great working with stardom. And President Okada at stardom has been an awesome partner for us, and I'm very grateful to him, and I'm very glad that they made the changes they made. Thank you very much, Kristen. Rich Fan from PW Torch is next, followed by Corey, I'm sorry, Corey Sharber from WHYY in Philadelphia. Rich? Of Tales with Kristen. Uh, when it comes to Ring of Honor, particularly the women's division, you just cited one of the best in the uh, world. Uh, you have your balance and stardom, your balance in uh, wrestlers from other promotions coming in, in addition to Athena and her awesome run. Is there ever going to be opportunities, say, like uh, what happened with Eddie, where you can start to showcase perhaps Athena or a women's champion, perhaps the TV champion, on AEW television to encourage folks to go over and hop on over to the Honor Club and uh, participate more to allow more folks to see such a great product? Well, uh Okay, can you maybe, I just want to make sure I, I understand that, that what you're asking. You might ask, so you're, I think you're saying uh, featuring some of the ROH stars, like great champion, like Athena or whoever is the ROH Women's World Champion uh, after the match with Sheeta on uh, Supercard of Honor. Are you saying about featuring more of the ROH champions, including the women's champions, whoever wins? Uh, Sheeta versus Athena, and whoever wins, Aminata versus Billy. Are you saying featuring the champions more on AEW? Yes, sir. Exactly. So try to give out just like with the Continental Crown when Eddie was on there, and you could see the New Japan Strong, the AEW Continental Title, as well as the Ring of Honor World Title. So you're kind of like seeing, oh wow, this guy's in other spots. Same thing with the women, particularly with whomever wins those matches this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely something I've considered. That's why I just wanted to make sure I, we were on the same page. Absolutely, yeah. It's something I have thought about, and, uh, you know, I think we've kept the ROH show very strong, and for a lot of people, it's a must-see show every Thursday, in large part because of the great women's wrestling we're featuring, and it's one of the highlights of the show, and absolutely the top champions and the top stars in ROH are absolutely capable of wrestling in AEW, and, and at times I think there's uh, good opportunities for that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rich. Corey Sharber from WHYY in Philadelphia is next, followed by Jeremy Lambert from Fightful. Corey? Can you guys hear me? Now we can. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I kept I kept asking me to reconnect my audio for some reason. Um, hey, thanks for uh, taking the time to speak with me today. Um, obviously, you know you know the history of Ring of Honor, and Ring of Honor got its start uh, over two decades ago here in Philadelphia. If you could please just, uh, if you could, Tony, just speak to um, the importance of uh, the Philadelphia wrestling scene um, to Ring of Honor, especially with all these uh, crazy big shows happening in the region at the time. It means a lot to be back in Philadelphia. I really appreciate you asking. One of the first trips I think I ever took with my dad that wasn't like a family trip was to Philadelphia. Uh, a lot of you are going to know this story, but um, for the one or two of you that don't, I was a huge wrestling fan as a kid. I was a tape trader since I was 12 years old. I got on the Internet when I was a kid and uh, met a lot of strangers and uh, that were big wrestling fans and many of them became great friends of mine to this day. And I had a dream to go to Philadelphia and see ECW. 
And uh, I was, at the time, testing to get into the University of Illinois Laboratory High School, which is the number one academic high school in the country. And it's a public school, and it's you just have to test to get in. And I did very well on the test, but I didn't want to go to the school. And I was told if I could just prove I could get into the school, that would be uh, something special I could hang my hat on. But it was a bit of a bait and switch because then when I scored in the 99.9th percentile on the SSAT examination that they used to grade the applicants, uh, my parents basically made me uh, accept my admission and made me go there. And since they pulled a bait and switch on me uh, to remedy it, they offered pretty much any one-time thing I wanted, what, was, what one thing would I want in exchange for them forcing me to go to a school that ended up really changing my life much for the better and being a great experience. So it, was a, it turned out to be a win-win. Uh, and that thing was to go to ECW and go to a weekend around Philadelphia, uh, a house show on Friday night that was a, a bus ride and then in Philadelphia at the ECW arena getting to see some great people that I've worked with including Kaz, Chris Jericho, and Rob Van Dam and among others and it was Chris Jericho's last night in ECW and it was a night I felt like Rob Van Dam really broke through and got over with the fans in Philadelphia in the stretcher match where I was in the crowd and you could feel like from the start of the match to the end, the perception of him had really changed and the respect from the crowd uh, changed. And I really believe that. And I love wrestling so much. And for me, a big part of the experience is Philadelphia. And it's a mecca of wrestling to me. I've had great experiences in Philadelphia as a promoter myself. We've had some great events there. The third ever episode of AEW Dynamite is there. I remember it very fondly, including the Darby Allen versus Chris Jericho Philly Street fight. That was Darby's first big main event ever in AEW, and just had great times in Philadelphia since I was a kid. I love it very much, and this is a city I very closely associate with the best of pro wrestling, and that's why I'm so excited to bring a great show like ROH Supercard of Honor this weekend to Philadelphia. It should be a great Friday night. Thank you very much, Corey. Jeremy Lambert from Fightful is next, and then I've got a write-in from Zach Haydorn from Brass Ring Media. Jeremy, you are next. Hey, Jeremy. Um, just want to ask about the kind of the pay-per-view. I know Final Battle was on Watch ROH. This one also on Watch ROH, on ROH Honor Club. The AW pay-per-views moving to also Triller for U.S. fans, YouTube pay-per-view. What was the decision-making going into kind of the switch with the pay-per-views? Uh, well, it's, it's expanding our expanding our reach and uh, really excited about uh, the opportunity to hopefully grow the audience. We've got so much great, really, really, really great uh, pay-per-views here and, and you know of course this show is available on watchroh.com as a streaming special for AEW our pay-per-view providers we've opened it up working with more great streaming companies and different platforms and hopefully growing even more it's amazing how much our pay-per-view audience and our pay-per-view revenue has expanded since we've grown and I think we've built a reputation that AEW delivers great pay-per-view events, and it's helped us grow that audience year over year where, you know, we keep having record years on pay-per-view. And 2023 was our biggest year yet by far, and I think 2024 we can be even bigger. We're off to a great start. We just did one of our biggest buy rates ever for Revolution, and we're coming up on AEW Dynasty. I'm going to join a lot of you. We'll have a chance to talk about a lot of these AEW subjects again very soon just a few weeks for Dynasty in St. Louis, Jim's hometown. And uh, I do think something we've done really well is 
building a great, consistent pay-per-view audience that's grown, and we've expanded the calendar, and they've followed. And we've added new events. And this year, adding AEW Dynasty. And the ticket's selling great in St. Louis, and the pay-per-view has great demand, and people are really excited for this show. Got a great card, and like I said, I'll be with all of you talking about Dynasty very soon, and very excited about Supercard of Honor, which, again, it's a very different delivery method here, and we've been able to grow that streaming service. Watch ROH.com subscription this past year has grown to be bigger than ever. We have more streaming subscribers on ROH than ever before in the history of the company. So this is the peak of ROH streaming, which is really saying something, I think, and uh, very cool to be able to acquire the company, change it, and... I'm very proud of where we are, and I think we've built a great product in ROH and really should be a great show tomorrow night at Supercard of Honor in Philadelphia. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks. Uh, Zach Haydorn from Brass Ring Media. I have a write-in from Zach, Tony, and then I've got another write-in after that from Kate Hensler from Fightful. So two write-ins in a row, and first was Zach from Brass Ring Media. Has there been any movement on a potential Ring of Honor only television or streaming deal? Well, uh, we right now we're, we have our own streaming platform, so it's relevant to the question I just answered, I suppose. Uh, we built the biggest audience in the history of ROH, which the company dates back 22 years. And this right now is, uh, the biggest the company streaming audience has ever been, which I think bodes really well. AEW's got a big media rights renewal coming up. I also hold the ROH rights, which are open for business. So absolutely, there are great chances to expand or change the platform going forward. I think that we hold a lot of cards going into next year. And ROH is a great asset, and it's something to keep an eye on for sure, uh, wh where all this content is going to be in 2025. It's a very exciting time for us. Thanks, Jim. Hey, there you go, Zach. And Kate Hensler from Fightful uh, also gave us a write-in, Tony. And her question is, we've seen uh, Ring of Honor become a women's-driven brand for the first time in its history in correlation with a huge upswing in AEW. Can you speak a bit to the focus on that, especially with this women's tournament concluding? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I love working with these great stars, and we have some of the best women in pro wrestling in ROH today. We have these huge matches on the card, and in addition to the presence from stardom that we talked about, which is making the card even stronger. We've got great championship matches, including the first ever ROH Women's World Television Championship match, crowning a new champion. Who will be the inaugural champion? Will it be Queen Aminata or will it be Billy Starks? We've seen both of them rise and improve and change so much. They both had some great matches on the road this championship out and I think it's going to be tremendous and then you've got this great world championship match with Sheeta and Athena and I've talked about it a bit on this call but I think it's really important to focus on you know Sheeta has uh, beaten Athena before frankly and I've, we've never seen Athena this shaken uh, we've never seen Athena this shook and I really love what is happening and I just think that right now in ROH uh, we've built it into some of the best wrestling around and in particular some of the best women's wrestling and it's a lot of fun and I think people are really going to enjoy the show in Philadelphia tomorrow and some of the best stuff on the card is this uh, tournament final in my opinion this great Queen Amanada versus Billy Starks match, and this great Athena versus Hikaru Shido Women's World Championship match. They've been really great stories to watch unfold on the ROH TV, and I'm really excited about them. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Kate. Um, so next is going to be Elmer Navarrete from Talking to Eddie Baby. And Elmer will be followed by Josh Nason from the Wrestling Observer. Elmer, you are next. Are you ready? For Eddie Baby, representing the Talking to Eddie Baby. So, as we talked about how much the women's uh, division has grown, not only in AEW, but in ROH. Because, again, as we know, since establishing in the beginning, ROH, Ring of Honor, was mainly male-dominated. But now the women are, in my opinion, are taking over. And you've just been putting over the women throughout this whole call. So, I just want to give a big shout-out for that. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I think that's great. Do you, do you have a question? Oh, I mean, like I said, it's just all about the women. I mean, you've I've been answering them throughout the whole day. I mean, I, we could talk about the main event uh, with Eddie Kingston and Mark Briscoe. I mean, Mark Briscoe, he could potentially become the first, uh, not the first, but like a Triple Crown Grand Slam champion for ROH because that's the only belt that's missing in this catalog. And with his legacy being grown, especially as a tag team champion, um, do you see that possibility being happening? Well, I'm really glad you asked. Thanks for asking about Mark Briscoe and Eddie Kingston. Uh, it's something that's important to both men, this match and this championship. You know, uh, it's the 11-year anniversary of Jay Briscoe winning the ROH World Championship. Mark Briscoe's never been a single champion in ROH. He's been in a uh, a great champion in, in the, excuse me, I, I might uh, sneeze here. Give me one second. Excuse me. Uh, and uh, Mark's been a great singles, uh, excuse me, been a great uh, tag team champion. And, uh, you know, teaming with his brother, Jay Briscoe, in one of the most legendary partnerships ever in pro wrestling, one of the greatest teams. And I'm really grateful that you did bring it up. Uh, if, if nobody had asked, I was certainly going to expound on this in my closing remarks. So thank you. Uh, this is the two-year anniversary of my time owning ROH. Like I said, it's the 11-year anniversary of Jay Briscoe's title win. And this is the two-year anniversary of when I acquired ROH. And that's also how I acquired the Briscoes contract and first met the Briscoes. I've been interested in the Briscoes for a long time, and I think it's pretty well documented. I, they, I was not able to bring them onto AEW TV, but I really liked them, and when I acquired ROH, the promotion, they were top team in ROH. And going into... Supercard of Honor, which is where I took over, we had positioned it working with ROH it, as part of AEW working with other promotions. We kind of set up a potential Briscoes versus FTR, ROH versus AEW match. And then when I acquired the promotion, I followed through on this as a match in ROH. And the first time I got to work with Mark and Jay and I really, really liked them personally and clicked with them right away. And I went from wanting them in AEW to really, really wanting them in AEW. And I really pushed several times very hard and even brought them to some of the AEW shows thinking that it was going to work and feeling like pretty confident. And I never was able to push it through. And the experiences I had working with them in ROH made me feel so strongly about how great the Briscoes were and that they would be so additive and that they're great, great people. And so it was, it was two years ago this weekend that I first met Mark and Jay. And it's been just over a year since Jay passed. And I think about it every day. I keep uh, a few different photos of Jay in my wallet. So I really do think about it every day because I see him every day, at least a few times. And I think about Mark all the time and his great family and 
they're some of the most wonderful people I've ever met. They have a wonderful home. It's amazing to see how they are the kings and queens of their hometown and how that part of Delaware, how they really rule the roost. And Philadelphia is in their backyard, essentially. It's a short drive from where they live, and they have so much history there, the Briscoes. It's a great friendship between Eddie Kingston and the Briscoe family there. Eddie was one of the people that was there with me at Jay Briscoe's funeral, and he's somebody that I can tell has so much love for the Briscoe family, for Jay and for Mark Briscoe. And I think our whole locker room really has so much respect for Mark. And it was Eddie who came in in a way that only Eddie can, where I was in the middle of a production meeting and I had like, you know, a bunch of people, uh, coaches, production staff, people working on the floor, people working on the truck, uh, all kinds of different people in the backstage in my office. And there's like 17 people in there and we're going over notes and Eddie just burst in and <laughs> said he really wanted to wrestle Mark Prisco. And it's a while ago. And he reminded me that it was the 11 year anniversary. And he reminded me, uh, of a lot of things. And I definitely wanted that as well. And I then sat down with him and we talked about it and then it involved a change in some of our plans, but it was a good change to make. And I'm, and I made the changes and I'm very excited about Mark Briscoe versus Eddie Kingston. Eddie really wanted that to wrestle Mark, uh, at that 11-year anniversary of Jay Briscoe's ROH World Championship win. And to me, it's also special because in addition to that great milestone that we just talked about with the anniversary of Jay Briscoe's championship win 11 years ago, it's also, for me, the two-year anniversary of my time with ROH and my time with the Briscoes. And I'll never forget the first time I walked up to Mark and Jay and Dax and Cash, talked to them about that great match they had, and uh, it's one of the most special trilogies ever in wrestling. It's one of the best things I've ever been a part of. And now I, I'm very excited to be a part of what's going to happen tomorrow night with Eddie Kingston versus Mark Briscoe for the ROH World Championship match. And thank you for asking about it. I really appreciate it because it was certainly uh, on my mind. Thank you, Elmer. Okay, we've got time for two more. so. Let's go with Josh Nason, as promised, from the Wrestling Observer, and then we'll, follow, we'll, we'll end with Dax Cheeves from Sunday Night's Main Event Radio. Josh. Up uh, is ROH Jason. What is the exact date when the exclusive negotiating window for your AEW TV rights with WBD is up? I... I'm not sure that I'm able to answer that question, and I don't want to endanger everybody who works here, so you're getting anybody in trouble. So I'm not sure I can say, but uh, you know, it's it's coming up soon. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but uh, um, I, I probably shouldn't say the exact date, uh, but I, I I do appreciate you asking that. It would probably be beneficial to me, <laughs> but but I'm, uh, I'm I probably shouldn't say the exact date. But I will say I think I I think I can say it's coming up pretty soon here. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks, Josh. Finally, Dax Cheese from Sunday Night's Main Event Radio. Dax. Hello? Hello? Dax, we're good. Hey, guys. We, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you now. Tony, pleasure Great. to uh, get a chance to talk to you. Um, first, as a fellow Philadelphian, thank you for keeping Ring of Honor alive. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Definitely start. It's been, it's been great. It's been a great experience. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, you're talking to somebody who's been there as much since the days of the Murphy Rec Center, so I, I cherish this promotion very much. So thank you for that. My question, um, during the early years of Ring of Honor or ROH's Supercard of Honor, uh, it's been known to be an event that really actually outshined WrestleMania in some years when it came to match card quality. 
Um, it's even safe to say ROH is responsible for WrestleMania weekend and how it elaborate, how elaborate it is right now, uh, because of what their methods was to, you know, challenge them every single time. Um, in this stage, do you feel the pressure with trying to be the best in show of this weekend, or do you have a different mindset going in? I always want to be the best wrestling show of any given day, week, time slot, any opportunity we get. And I think we're, we're going to offer some of the very best in wrestling at ROH Supercard tomorrow night. I, I think it's going to be a great event. I'm really excited for it. And I think we've set a high standard at Supercard of Honor in Dallas was a tremendous show with great moments like that first ever FTR Briscoe's match and the arrival of Samoa Joe, who's now the AEW world champion uh, that event, the, the impact, the results, uh, the things that happened that night at Supercard of Honor 22, that's still being felt in the wrestling business today. Then you had Supercard last year in Los Angeles. What a great event. Uh, so many great things on the card. Great moments. Great moment for the wrestler, Katsuyori Shibata. Great matches. Uh, top to bottom, Eddie Kingston, Claudio was tremendous. Uh, another great win for Athena on her run. And so many great things uh, I could say about uh are these, these past two super card of honors yet uh, I I'm maybe look I think this third one my two year anniversary here coming up and uh, super card tomorrow night I think I'm looking forward to this one the most of all I think travel wise also I probably won't have anything scary I don't know if anybody knows the first uh, Samoa Joe uh, appearance was one of the all time great pro wrestling travel stories Big shout out to the pilots that made that happen. I got them AEW World Championship belt, and it's very appropriate Samoa Joe being the AEW World Champion now as well. But I had uh, gotten these championship belts for the pilots that made it happen that got Samoa Joe to Supercard of Honor because uh, it's it's an all time story, and uh, they deadheaded uh, to pick him up uh, when commercial airlines did not uh, fly as expected. And uh, Samoa Joe also drove out of out of the way uh, to a very small town. It would be fair to say, basically in the middle of nowhere, uh, to a very small remote airport that was the only airport that they could fly in or out of uh, because of a ridiculous set of circumstances. Yet here we are, and uh, that event came off. And uh, I don't think we'll have anything quite that scary uh, tomorrow. Hopefully. And uh, very excited about Supercard tomorrow. Okay, thanks, Dax. And um, thanks, everyone. We're now at the end of our time. It's always the fastest hour in wrestling. But, Tony, if you have any closing thoughts, uh, share them here now. Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, I think we're competing with Rampage for the fastest hour in wrestling here on these calls. But I really enjoy them. And I, I just I enjoy Rampage, and I enjoy visiting with all of you and with you, Jim. Uh, I really appreciate you all doing this. Uh, thank you to everybody covering the show. Hopefully I'll see some of you in the scrum tomorrow night after. And I always really appreciate all of you who come to these events, cover these events. Um, and if you aren't able to join us, I appreciate all of you join us on the phone. It wouldn't be possible to produce wrestling weekly without the great coverage we get from all of you. Uh, it's really important. And I don't take it for granted. I really appreciate all of you. Thank you for what you do. And hopefully I'll see some of you in person. And if I don't see you in person here, maybe get to catch up with you on the Dynasty uh, all-media call or the Scrum afterwards, which will be fun for Jim because then Jim gets to go sleep in his own bed after uh, hanging out at the Scrum. So uh, that will be a good time in St. Louis. Uh, and thank you for hosting this, Jim. I appreciate it. Uh, this has been really fun and, and look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you, Tony. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to all of it and especially hoping to see a lot of you here in, in St. Louis uh, for Dynasty. I uh, really do appreciate everyone participating today, our sincere appreciation for your time and interest, and in particular, um, your continued interest in Ring of Honor. It means a lot to, I know, Tony and everybody with the organization. So we're going to be distributing an audio recording to all attendees shortly. 
uh, as we normally do. And we look forward to seeing you in Philadelphia this Sunday for Ring of Honor, Super Card of Honor. And uh, we ask you to all have a great day. We'll see you soon. Best to you. Bye.